Dad. Dad. Hey, Pav Labs, and welcome back to our channel. Today, we are going over a very important topic, but before we get to that, remember to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss one of our videos. Okay, let's continue on. So, you're thinking about getting a corgi. Here are five things to consider before getting your very own corgi. Here are some of the hereditary diseases, but not all, that corgis are more prone to. From our experience with Pavlov, he had some back issues and we have gone to physical therapy and acupuncture to help alleviate that back pain that he has. He hasn't been diagnosed with anything in particular, but he does have a sore back here and there. Do you have any advice, Karen, on people who want a corgi? Well, they should definitely know that there are um, things to be concerned about with long back dogs. They are more at risk for spinal injuries. And so I want to be really mindful of jumping activities and uh, being able to do uh, specific exercises for core strength to help protect the spine. Mm -hmm. um, uh, learn how to do the proper exercises. Yeah. yeah. And be able to do home exercise programs. Yeah. They don't all need, you know, specific uh, a therapist to um, take them through rehab mm -hmm. if there's no injuries, but there is plenty of preventative exercises that can be done, which should be done. Yeah, definitely. So Pavlov goes to Atlas Rehab in Santa Barbara. If you guys are local or in the area, definitely check out Karen. She's amazing. One thing to consider is the financial cost of owning a corgi. In order to be a responsible owner, you have to make sure that you are financially able to provide the care that a corgi requires. Some of these conditions can cost thousands of dollars, not only in surgical costs, but also rehabilitation and therapy. Because of all of the potential health issues for your corgi, we do advise that you get insurance. So we pay about $80 for 80% reimbursement for our insurance. And we have Healthy Paws. So make sure that you get insurance early if you are considering getting it because if for some reason your dog has a problem and then you go and get insurance after or you want to get insurance after, the insurances are likely to say, okay, we'll, we'll cover you ex everything except for that one thing that you had in the past because it's a pre-existing condition. Owning a corgi is expensive. First off, you gotta buy the corgi and corgis aren't cheap. In 2015, we paid $1,100 for Pavlov, and that's because he was a tricolor. Kind of messed up. The red and white corgis were $1,300. So that was apparently on the cheap end of when we got Pavlov in 2015. We've heard of breeders in 2015 charging about $2,000, and I've heard now they go up to like four or $5,000 for a corgi. Oh my God, right? And so, just because that love is cheap doesn't mean we love them any less. After you purchase the corgi, then there are obviously the expenses that come with it. There are the beds you gotta buy, there's the toys, there's the dog food. Feeding a corgi is really expensive. Because of the weight issues associated with corgis, they should be put on special diets. We should be mindful of what you put into their food because they are prone to put on weight. And so there's also the expense of maybe more expensive dog food because you don't want a fat corgi on your hands. If you're considering getting a corgi, you better like hair and you better like shedding because they shed all year round. Anthony is always vacuuming and we are constantly brushing him to get the excess fur out. Whoa. Oh shit. It's insane, and it's also summer, so he's shedding a ton more than usual, but he sheds every day. His fur is in our food. It's on our clothes. We can't wear black anymore. Like, 
Literally. This is, I put this shirt on like five minutes ago. Why do I wear black shirts around? Speaking about cleanliness, not only is there house never clean, but our cars are never clean. Never. We travel with Pavlov a lot and we go on a lot of road trips. So we usually just throw him in the front, but his hair gets everywhere. I'll be driving and there'll just be like hair in my mouth. We've had um, car washes charge us more because of the hair. It's kind of messed up, but there's that much hair inside your car. In order to resolve this issue, we partnered up with Barking Buddy. We're giving away not one, but two Barking Buddy car seat covers to protect your car from any dog hair. Let's see what's inside. Case. Nice drawstring bag so you yeah. can contain it. Ooh, travel bowl. That's perfect. Look, and it comes with oh. head, seat on the head seat cover. Let's see. Looks like these straps are there and they're probably latched in place in the car. It has like a little pocket right here so you can still have some functionality in your back seat. These go over the headrest and I think there are two more to go over the other headrest so that it balances kind of like in a U shape with these latching onto the front and back seat headrests. It's this little crevice that your dog can sit in and you can't jump to the front. It creates like a little barrier for all the fur to be contained. So we're gonna show you what this looks like with pad inside. Yeah! Buddy. Oh, look, he's in my fits. I sit. Here. In order to enter this giveaway, all you have to do is comment below why you need this car seat cover and share this video on your own social media. So that can be your Instagram story, that can be on your Instagram post or your Facebook page. Just share this video and tag us and send us proof. If you don't want to enter the giveaway and you just want this car seat cover, I'll leave a link below. And you can use the code PAVLOGS10 for 10% off. The giveaway will end in one week on 7-12 and we will randomize the entries and announce the two winners. Good luck and we hope you enter and win. The next thing we're going to talk about is the fact that Corgis have huge personalities. Corgis are a herding dog breed, so they were made to work, which means that it's in his blood to get our attention and be active. Because they are a herding breed, there are some things that come along with it that might be a little bit difficult to deal with. Corgis might be really triggered by bikes or other fast moving things like skateboards or scooters or even running children. Uh, no. Corgis are really stubborn and they can take over your household. So you have to have hmm, a certain level of discipline and a corgi breed in order to make sure that they don't dominate you. And part of their big personality is that they bark a lot. Bark a lot. They bark a lot. And Pavlov's actually on the quieter end of corgis, but he still barks at a lot of things. Skateboards, bikes, someone sneezes. If you want a corgi, be prepared to hear the yaps. Part of the reason why Pavlov's not a big barker is because we put a lot of time into his training. And even with that being said, it's part of their nature. It's part of the breed. And so he is a barking dog. He was made to bark. And so we can manage it a little bit, but corgis are for sure on the louder end of dogs. And so you have to be prepared for that if you want a corgi. So due to their stubborn personalities, need to always work, they do require an immense amount of behavioral training. So making sure that you have the time to invest in training your corgi is a big component. Speak. Finding a corgi is not easy and it's very time consuming. Because of the health risks associated with corgis, you want to make sure that you get a reputable breeder that has done their homework on their dogs. They're not just backyard breeders breeding any dog that they want and um, without knowledge of the genetic conditions that might be passed down. And so reputable breeders usually have fewer litters throughout the year and um, so that they can monitor the quality of the dogs going out. 
And so if you're looking for a reputable breeder, you have to look at specific times and it's a big time commitment and you gotta do your research and sometimes they have to interview you. And so if you're looking to get a corgi, you gotta make sure that you're ready to be patient and that you're ready to put in the time that's necessary to find a good dog out there for you. Corgis require a lot of exercise. So even though corgis are known as a dwarf dog, they require tons of exercise and mental stimulation. Even though they can live in many different environments, such as a house, apartment, they require a great amount of outdoor time, so either a long walk, a run, or fetch. You make sure you have the time to invest into your corgi. So if you want to own a corgi, understand that you have to put a lot of time and energy into maintaining them and keeping them active and keeping them, keeping them happy. So as you can see, corgis take a lot of energy to keep stimulated. Corgis are also super mischievous, so if you leave them at home unattended, they might get into stuff, especially food, because they have such a huge appetite. So if you watch this video, and you think that you can put up with all of the things that we mentioned, then maybe you can consider getting a corgi. But if anything we said to you was alarming or it just sounds like something you're not down to put up with with your dog, then maybe a corgi isn't for you. And that's okay. There are plenty of other dogs out there. But we hope you guys liked this video covering the five things to consider before getting a corgi. We hope you guys like, subscribe, and hit that notification button so you never miss one of our videos. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Praise Pat God. Praise Pat God. Praise Pat God. Praise Pat God. Praise Pat God.